Games. Games. Hi, and welcome to Table by Teresa. Let's take a look at Hue. In Hue, players place cards with colors, trying to build sections of those that will score them points. Hue is part of Perplexed Games' Pack of Games, a set of eight games about the size of a pack of gum. Each game retails for $6, and the company also sells it with a pod to carry them all. Pod. The picture looks like a zippered pouch. It's a different take on a tile laying game, partly because the tiles are cards, small cards. So it's not a tile laying game. No, it is, but without actual tiles. Yes. Setup is simple. Take three starting cards marked by this symbol and put them face up in the center of the table. Deal each player five regular cards and one poison card. Does everything have to be about death? The only things that die are colors. The colors of the last card in the player's hand will determine their score. But we haven't known to play. Ah, but we will. If this is our final card, we'll look for the largest contiguous section of purple on the board. We'll get one point for each thin section and three points for squares in the largest contiguous purple area. The same will be true for green, but yellow will score double points because it's the middle color. On the left, green would score double. I'm confused. Well, let's see how it works. The colors in hue drive the game. Hence the name. The first player chooses a card and plays it with at least one square adjacent to one on the table or with exactly one square over one on the table. So any of these moves is legal. But this one isn't. Players don't have to match colors, but they should be trying to create contiguous sections of color like these. They can also poison a whole section with their poison card, making it worth nothing. But poison cards can be covered too. Play continues until each player has one card left. The last card determines the player's points. We saved this card. So we'll look at red first. We find the largest complete section of red. We get one point for each small section and three for each square. Red doesn't have any squares. This gives us a total of six. Now we'll look at yellow. Followed by blue. The middle color is always doubled. So we have a total of 27. Our opponent has 26. We win. Barely. Hugh has a lot to love. It's just a bunch of colors in a tiny box. No, no it's not. Although it is tiny. I just said that. You can take it anywhere and it's so cute. The design is minimal and clean. It feels a bit like you're playing with paint samples. No, like paint chips. Why would you play with paint chips? Just go on Pinterest and look up paint chip art. It plays well with any number of players. Okay, the suggested number of players. Working as well with two as with five is rare, but Hugh pulls it off. The game feels like a puzzle, but it keeps shifting. Because you can switch what you're working toward, you can adjust to other players. You'll be able to see what they're trying to do, at least usually, and you can try to disrupt them while connecting up the colors you need. Disrupting is good. Of course, they can do the same to you. This makes for interesting interaction. Spending too much time trying to thwart your opponents could put you at a disadvantage, but ignoring them definitely will. This game is quick and you can play several times without it getting old. I bet I can't. The rules are simple. This is a perfect family game. No one will feel too badly if they lose since the game is so quick, but there's plenty of depth for adults with enough simplicity for kids. And at just 
you'll probably feel okay parting with your cash. Of course, you may not like it. Of course. It's tiny, tiny enough to get lost. If you buy the whole set and the pod, that won't be such a problem, but then you're looking at $50 when the set is on sale, so that might be less appealing. If you want an epic game, this isn't it. Why would someone expect an epic game in a box smaller than a tin of mints? I don't know. If you like games with theme, Hue won't do. It's completely abstract, unlike this picture that I now want to make into a board game. It can be a bit mean since you'll need to try to block your opponents. Of course, if they're clever enough, they'll be able to anticipate that and bluff or at least hold on to a backup plan. So what do I think? As if anyone cares. They've watched this far. I think this is a great game. It's the perfect size for a purse or even a pocket. Break this out in a coffee shop and people will ask about it, partly because it's so attractive and partly because very few people will have seen anything like it. I can teach this game in a matter of minutes and a practice round is quick enough that if someone's a bit confused about how scoring works, you can easily get them to play another round. I was a little worried that the tiny box was just a gimmick, but Hugh plays really well. The scoring works differently than any other game I've played and it's a nice surprise. Just a warning, I got a review copy of Hugh from Perplexed Games. That doesn't affect my ability to give an objective review. Sure it doesn't. Think what you want, but I can't be bought for a board game. If you'd like to check out other people's reviews of Hugh and find a few extra thoughts from me, come visit Table by Teresa. And here's all the stuff you don't really need to know. Thanks for watching.